In this video, we're going through another turbo machine problem, in this case, another uh, centrifugal pump. And the problem statement says the geometry of a centrifugal pump is given below and it runs at a speed of 1600 RPM. Estimate the discharge required for axial entry, the power generated in the water in watts and the head produced. Okay, um, if you want to see the full derivation of these equations I'm going to use, watch the previous example. The tangential velocity can be simply defined by this equation. And later on, we're going to need the work required, so the or the power, so to speak. So this is going to be um, rho times the volumetric flow rate times this. So these equations are defined based on the velocity tri triangles of a centrifugal pump. The equations are the same regardless if you're looking at the inlet or outlet. The first thing what we're going to do is define u. So u is actually the linear velocity of the pump at the inlet or outlet. So for u1, omega uh, times r defines it. And the same way goes for the outlet, so this is omega times r2. Now before we could do this calculation, we have to um, define omega, or the angular velocity of the pump, in terms of radians per second. So, omega is 1600 rotations per minute. So what you get is 167.552 radians per second. So we can use this to define the linear velocities at the inlet and outlet. Okay, so this is what you get for the linear velocities at the inlet and the outlet. Um, one thing to point out in this problem, it says estimate the discharge required for axial entry. So this is a key term to understand. What axial entry means is that the water enters axially towards the pump and perfectly radiates outward. So what I'm saying, so this is the pump, so water is going into this, the, the axis of the pump, so this is going to be the impeller, and then the, the water perfectly exits or enters the impeller radially. So that's kind of hard to see in this picture, but all these vectors, so let me draw that out actually. So this is the water coming in axially, and then it moves out radially, uh, perfectly radially. So then this will be our control volume, the inlet of our control volume, and this will be the outlet of our control volume. So this is where the blades would exist, and so forth. So what that means is that the tangential velocity at one is simply zero, because all the velocity component is radial, and that's in terms of the absolute velocity. So what that means is that the velocity at one is strictly the velocity in the normal component, or radially outward. So by using this equation up here, we could actually simplify it, because this goes to zero for the inlet. So what we could say is that u1 is equal to v1 normal over the tangent of beta one. So, in other words, we could define V1 normal as U1 tangent beta 1. And that ends up being 9.676 meters per second. Okay, so another thing we have to do is find the normal velocity at the outlet. So, we could say that mass is conserved, so M1 dot is equal to M2 dot. Or in other words, we could say that rho AV of 1 equals rho of AV of 2. And again, we could rewrite this even further. We could say that A1 V1 normal is equal to A2 V2 normal. So we could define V2 normal in terms of the geometry of the inlets and outlets. So we could say V1 normal times A1 over A2. Now A1 and A2 are based on the blade width and basically the perimeter of the inlet. So we could say that this is simply 2 pi R1 B1 divided by 2 pi R2 B2. So that's the cross-sectional areas at the inlet and outlet. So the two pi's actually cancel, so then we have a, a very simple equation. So this is V1 normal, R1, B1, divided by R2, B2. So we just have to plug in these numbers and get the second normal component for the outlet. So what we get for the normal component at the outlet is 4.838 meters per second. So our next goal, so we could find the power required, we have to find the flow rate through the pump. So you can analyze the flow rate either at the inlet or outlet, it doesn't matter because it remains constant throughout the pump. So we could say that 
the volumetric flow rate is the same as A1, V1 normal. So we just simply plug this in. So this is gonna be two pi R1, V1 times V1 normal. So we plug in these values to get the volumetric flow rate going through the pump. And the flow rate ends up being 0.243 meters cubed per second. So now we could actually solve for the power equation. So we could rewrite that equation. So it's W dot or the power by the pump equals rho times AV, the volumetric flow rate times U2 V2 tangential minus U1 V1 tangential. And we're told earlier that the flow into the impeller or our control volume is um, axial, meaning all the flow enters radially. Therefore, there's no tangential component in the inlet. So this will be zero. So this simplifies our equation to rho AV times U2 V2 tangential. Okay, I forgot to actually define another velocity. That is the tangential velocity at two, but we have the normal velocity at two, so we should be able to find that quite easily. So the tangential velocity at two is simply U2 minus V2 normal over the tangent of beta one or beta two. Okay, so that ends up being 15.454 meters per second. So now we have everything for this equation to find the power of the pump. And the power of the pump becomes 125.840 kilowatts. So that is the solution to part one of this problem. Well, I guess another solution would be the volumetric flow rate, which was defined in the problem as the discharge. So we also found that. So the last thing we have to do is find the pump head. So again, our the pump head is simply how much the pump can lift the fluid. So this would be the pump head. So how high it could pump. So uh, the simple equation for that is just W dot or the power divided by rho AV times G. Or another way you could write this is one over G times U2 V2 tangential, which is from this equation up here. And that would equal the pump head. So this would be the pump head. And then if you plug all those values into your calculator, what you get is 52.790 meters. So that's how high this pump can lift the fluid before gravity takes over, so to speak. Okay, so this problem, again, is pretty straightforward. If, I recommend if you don't understand where these equations come from, including the pump head, uh, please watch the video prior. I go through all the details and all the concepts you need to solve these problems. So hopefully this is becoming more straightforward and actually becoming more tedious. So once it becomes more tedious, that means you're, you've got this pretty much down. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.